Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, for a lot of you now, you're about to go back to school. You're either going to school like tomorrow, or you're going to school today, or college, or sixth form, or this week you're heading back to school at some point. And for me, I just finished school, so I've just done five, seven, 14? 14 years of school, something like that. I've just done 14 years of school. And I always dreaded going back for a few reasons, and one of the main reasons was, is how can I keep my faith secure, and how can I keep my faith real, when I go to school. I want to tell my school friends about faith and about church, about life, but how vulnerable do I want to get with them because I was scared, I had the fear of ridicule and this fear of being laughed at, and this fear of not being accepted because I was different. Because it wasn't cool to be a Christian at school or college. Like it wasn't something that people were like, oh, I'm a Christian. It was something that you had to work on to tell people because you're scared of how they're going to react and if they're going to accept you. And I learned a few different ways of how to get past that fear and how to be myself and to be real at school. It took a long time, it took a lot of effort. I thought I'd share with you a few different ways that really helped me to be myself at school and to really grow my faith at school. The first point is, what do you lean on? Like, where are you lean on? Where are you getting your acceptance from? Like, I'm on this time in RV. So, in RV, we come into class and the teacher's like, right, we're going to redo all the season plan that everyone's done at the back of the class. So I was there, so in the back of class, the rest of my class, like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And the teacher puts me in the place one the first. I get put at the back of the class, near all the line is like at the wall. So I put on my chair, I go to sit down, and I fall over, because a friend of mine had pulled the chair out from under my legs, so I fell back right onto the floor. As funny as it was, I put my faith in the wrong thing. I let on something that was earthly and not heavenly. I'm not really talking about chairs now, I'm talking about what do you lean on? Like, where do you get your identity and your strength from? Is it from being the funniest in the class, being the naughtiest in the class, getting the best grades, dating the prettiest person of the year? Where are you leaning on what's earthly where you're getting your foundation from? What is your foundation where you go to school and you know you're good because you've done this, maybe you're the best at football, maybe you're the best at this sport, maybe you're known because you're the cleverest. What is it that you're leaning on what is earthly? So we often lean on earthly things that won't always be there, and this happens a lot in school, because in school we're building our identity, we're building who we are. So we try and latch on to anything that makes us feel good about ourselves, anything that pushes us up. So we lean on these earthly things who are unreliable and not always gonna be there. But there is one thing what is reliable and is always going to be there, and that's a heavenly thing. That's when we lean on something heavenly. That's when we lean on something heavenly. Look at Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. And it also goes in Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever. For in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. The Bible is full of verses where it talks to Jesus about a rock being our rock and being our cornerstone and how we've got to put our, our trust in, how we've got to lean on him. It's not talking about things that are unreliable, like putting your trust in something for a few hours or putting your trust in this relationship for a few months. It's about putting your trust in something forever. It's about leaning on something what's going to hold you and going to sustain you forever. And it's saying in the Bible, if you put your trust in God, I'm going to sustain you forever forever. Okay, Joe, I get that. I'm going to put my trust in God forever. Woo! But what do I do now? I'm going to school. I'm going to a scary place. I'm going to a place where I want to be for Jesus. But I can't put my trust in there. I don't get how now do I lean on God when I'm leaning on all, new, all these things. And the easiest, but the scariest way to make sure you're leaning on God and nothing else is taking that step out. It's taking that step out of the boat. Taking that step out of all your comfort and going, every day when you're going to school, God, your will is my will. What you want me to do today, I'm going to do it. Where you want me to go today, I'm going to go. If you tell me to talk to this person, I'm going to talk to them. If you tell me to talk about my faith in front of the canteen, if you tell me to do that, I'm going to do it, Lord. Going every single day, God, show me what you want to do with me. I'm going to take that step out. The main way to make sure that you're leaning on God and nothing else is taking the step out of all these earthly things and going, God... You will. You're falling, God, you're going to have to catch me. The main way to make sure you lean on God, nothing else is going, I don't care what people think about me, I'm going to say this because I know God's going to catch me. So the main way to make sure that you lean on nothing else but God is taking a step out. And that's petrifying. That is absolutely scary. That's something that is so scary to think about, so scary to do, but it's a way that builds you and your faith because you're going, yeah, I don't care about all these temporary things I'm going to lean on. I'm going to take a step out and lean on something that's so heavenly and so full of God. 
that it's got to be him I'm going to lean on. Secondly, your school is a place with so many different people. You have amazing people, lovely people, you have terrible people, people who are so annoying and so mean. You have a school, you have this field, you have this place with so many different people and so many different walks of life coming together. And you learn that so much more than you do at home. You, the school is taking a step out of the sheltered life you've lived and you actually understand everything. You get told loads of different things what you wouldn't get told at home. And you get asked, what do you believe? What is your decision? How are you going to live? Are you going to follow the crowd or are you not going to follow the crowd? Are you going to live to these morals or are you going to live to these morals? Are you going to live to society's standard or are you going to live to God's standard? It's where you go and you've got so many different people saying so many different things and you're old enough now to decide what you believe in and what you're going to do and how you're going to stand. And that's daunting, that's scary. And it can be seen as a spiritual battle. School is a spiritual battle because you have so many people telling lies but also telling truths into your head every single day. You've got to fight and decide what you want to live in, what you want to stand for. And it's going to be testing, it's going to be hard. So it's a spiritual battle. And you can go in there feeling unprepared and unequipped. Like imagine a soldier at a medieval time. He's going to war, there's an army out in front there full of armour. And he's there standing there with no armour, no weapons just in his BJs. He would look stupid. He would feel stupid. He would feel unequipped and he would he would feel like he's not ready for this. Why? Because he's not equipped for the job. And that's how a lot of us can feel when we walk into school. Because we're walking into the spiritual battle what then has physical consequences. And we're feeling unequipped and unprepared because we haven't readied ourselves for it. And God goes, that's how you're gonna feel. And I'm going to counteract that by giving you the full arm of God. Asiphians, I can't say the word, it's going to be on the screen, I can't say that word. It's in Asiphians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full arm of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full arm of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted on the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which, will, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit of all occasions of all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all of the Lord's people. A lot of people might think, okay, this is so cool, we got an oh God, woo! But it's not a physical sword. Like, I can't go into school with a sword and chop anyone who I don't like. Like, people are like, okay, oh God, woo! But how is that actually physically gonna help me? And the thing you gotta understand is, with spiritual battles, Stuff happens up here in your mind, spiritual battle, with decisions. And what happens up here is then consequences into physical what happens through your mouth and what happens through your actions. So there might be a physical battle and to determine what happens there determines how physically you're going to output this. Yeah? So if we can't physically control it, we can mentally control it. And that's what the Iron God is. The Iron God protects you from this spiritual battle and helps you fight it so you can keep firm in what you believe and you keep firm in how you believe and what you say is true and what God says is true because you've got this arm of God on you. So you need to have this arm of God. So what I did every day before school when I was struggling, I'd walk to school and as I was, whilst I was walking to school, I would put this on me. I would say over me that I have this full arm of God. I memorize it and say it over me every single day because I knew that is what I needed to do to help me get through this day. We need to be ready to go into our school courses. We need to feel equipped and feel ready because we've got the arm of God on. So every day when you walk into school, put it on you and see if it helps. Spiritually go, God, put this on me, help me. Lastly, is use the Holy Spirit. When you feel like you can't speak up, when you feel like you haven't got bravery to talk about this, when you feel like you haven't got the courage to tell someone that they shouldn't be doing that, when you feel like you haven't got enough to be able to say it, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and start speaking and the Holy Spirit will come in. The Holy Spirit is one of the most powerful things God's given us and it fills us up to say stuff. I was reading this verse earlier in Acts. Stephen has just been put in charge of a lot of people of believers in Jerusalem. He's then got brought to the 40s because he was preaching. He was arrested and he was standing there 
speaking to the people who are going to decide his fate, decide where he goes, decides if he dies or not, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And he tells them a story about everything that's happened in the Bible and how along the way people didn't agree with him. People tried to stop God's will. And it never happened because God's will is stronger than them. And after all that, he does this most gangster thing. In front of people who can decide his fate, he goes, and you're those people. He goes, you're those people who are going to try and stop it, it's not going to work. He stands up and he has the bravery and courage to go, and that's you as well. Not because he's brave, not because he's bold, but be, because he had the faith to start speaking and ask the Holy Spirit to fill him. The Holy Spirit comes and we take that step out and start speaking. And then it comes and it fills us up. It gives us the courage. It gives us the boldness and it gives us the words. I remember a lot of time in RE class, we'd have these debates. And everyone knew I was a Christian and everyone was expecting me to do these debates and talk about it and defend my faith because there was not really anyone else who was standing up and being like, oh, I'm a Christian, yeah? So I was petrified when I was doing these debates because I'm like, I don't know anything. So I remember praying every time, God, I know nothing. I need you to fill me with the Holy Spirit or I'm going to look like a brat. And every time I would start speaking and then suddenly these words would come into my mouth and come into my mind and I'd carry on speaking and be able to do these debates not because of anything I knew but because of everything God knew through the Holy Spirit. So when you feel like you want to talk to your friend, when you feel like you need to do this, when you feel like you don't need to do this, when you feel like you need the strength to go, no, I'm not doing that, I'm not going to be part of that, ask God to fill with the Holy Spirit. He will fill you up and you will have the strength to do it. But to do it, you don't have to wait for him and then go, you go and he'll come to you. It's all about having the faith and the trust to go, I'm gonna step out even though I haven't got the spirit in me yet, but it's gonna come. And those are the three things that I really did in school to help me really stay in my faith, but also build myself, build my faith in school. And I get it guys, I've just done school. I get how it's so hard to keep your faith in school because everyone has so many other ulterior motives and it's not cool. But just stand strong, stay in the word, just keep praying, try these tips, see if they help. And if you've got any other tips to help anyone else, please comment them down below and let's have a discussion down there. I love you guys, and if this has helped you, please share it around because hopefully it can help someone else. I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care, bye.